Hi and welcome to Ru's Kitchen and Garden. This is your gardening buddy Ru. Today we are going to talk about rich cod, which I have um, recently sowed from seeds which I got from India because I like the Indian variety of rich cod. And um, it's been it's 11th of March today, so it's less than three months, and we are actually ready to harvest our rich cod. So let me show you the seeds. These are the seeds that I got and I have lots of them so my friends in Singapore can certainly take it from me. Now some people soak would soak these seeds overnight and sprout them and then put it in the soil. But if your seeds are new and if you know that your seeds are new and of good quality, you don't have to really soak them overnight and sprout them. You can just straight away put them in wet soil like suppose for example if the soil is this wet you can just sow you can just sow your seeds right one inch hole you make it and you put your seeds in it like this drop it in cover it up and then water it from the top so that's uh, that's all you need to do to soak your seeds now let's go to the actual plant so let me take you to my actual plant and let me talk about the pot and the soil and the compost. So these are my rich god plants. I have one, two, three, four of them. Three are in a pot in a container and the fourth one is in the soil. Here you can, as you can see, it's normal garden uh, soil, potting soil with uh, compost and cocoa peat and um, for compost I just use dry leaves then my kitchen waste and um, coffee grounds eggshells mm, wilted flowers I dry them in the Sun and then I use them in the pot I also use bone meal I use NPK if I feel my leaves are turning yellow you know then I use NPK um, I haven't had much pest issue with this plant it's quite robust in itself it doesn't not many pests attack but yeah often occasionally there are a few grasshoppers that like to chomp on the leaves but you know as they say if your insects don't like to eat them you shouldn't probably eat them so <laughs> they are organic um, I don't use any pesticides so the insects like to chomp on the green leaves um, well it's a fast grower uh, it's got these runners which it sends across the entire garden you know here let me show you some. so they kind of firmly grip they hold they have a firm grip on whatever medium you give them to hold on to and it's so beautiful as you can see yeah nature <laughs> so they have a firm grip and uh, like I said, I don't know if I said, I sowed these seeds on 23rd December and today 11th March, so less than 3 months. It has actually grown to this size. Let me come around and show you my fruit or my vegetable. So yeah, if I happen to call it a fruit, it's just a matter of habit because something that I harvest for me is fruit. Anyways, um, so yeah, I spoke about soil, I spoke about the seed, the fertilizer. Now pesticide, normally what I use is I dry neem leaves, I have a neem plant in the house, I dry neem leaves and um, I put that in the soil when all, like I keep putting that monthly, then I spray neem oil for insecticides, I spray rice water, but um, trust me with this plant I didn't have to do any of that, it's quite robust in itself, it has these occasional ants but I'm fine with them. Um, well, the one funny part about this plant is its flowers. You know, the flowers bloom late in the evening or uh, early evening or late night, sorry. So it's quite hard for me to come into the garden and pollinate it with the brush or even the bees don't work that late. So pollination happens rather slow on this plant and I kind of have to rely on these ants for pollination. And I think they are doing their job. Mm, I sometimes pollinate these with a brush, like I said, a paintbrush. But you know, a lot of times these don't go to fruit. They don't, they, these tiny little fruit kind of, 
don't go to full size because of lack of pollination um so yeah i think um, we need to come out more in the garden late in the evenings and pollinate it if the natural pollinators are not doing their job that well um, within like i said less than so 3 months i think less than 3 months you can harvest your first fruit these fruits are very quick to grow let me tell you um like 2 weeks ago or less than 2 weeks ago the fruit was this size yeah if you can see this size and now in a matter of maybe one week plus or something the fruit has gone to this big size ready to be harvested any time i can harvest it now i can refrigerate it for a week you know um this fruit is like a sponge so it's got a lot of water content in it and if i leave it on this plant itself and let it dry it will turn into a network of sponge so it's like a bio um what do you call it mm, uh eco friendly eco friendly loofa so you can wash your dishes or you can wash your body it's an eco friendly loofa no plastic no synthetic um this vegetable has is loaded with vitamin c and zinc so it's an immunity booster so you know now the entire planet is um is 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 fighting with corona virus the covid 19 i think if you eat this fruit uh, vegetable regularly in your diet if you include it i think you can build a strong immunity towards that virus you know or any kind of flu virus for that matter um yeah so it's uh because it has a lot of water content it's good in fighting cholesterol good in weight management it also regulates your blood sugar level it um is also helps your um you know bowel movement because it's got a lot of fiber um it also um, improves your hair texture quality growth your nail uh, strengthens your nail because of lot of zinc in it um so yeah i have also heard you know and one just hears or one reads from reliable sources of course that if you have the juice of a raw ridge gourd first thing in the morning it detoxifies your liver so it's a very good uh, detoxifier but again i'm not a medical professional i'm not a doctor so please please seek medical advice before you try any of these things drinking raw and stuff like that well you can cook it and um you can cook it in various ways this fruit uh, this vegetable has got different names in uh, it's called tori turiya mm dodka mm, lot of names so it also has a lot of ways to cook it some people just deep fry this with besan make bhajis out of it some people make an onion tomato based gravy some people make a yogurt based gravy some people only use dry spices to make it dry uh, version of a bhaji sabzi some people use it in their sambar because it's like spongy it soaks up all the great flavors of your masalas your curries your gravies so it's a very versatile vegetable uh, well many people would discard these ridges but my mother in law has taught me a very nice chutney recipe wherein we scrape these ridges out we dry roast them on a pan and then we add garlic and spices to it and it's a very nice um side chutney to go with your food you know it's 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 very nice um yeah so there are many ways to cook this vegetable there are many health benefits that this vegetable has it is so easy to grow it's so low maintenance it just takes a small pot space and a stick on which this vine can uh, actually uh, creep crawl on so you don't need a big garden or you don't need a big balcony space to grow this this is very it takes not much of your space it will just grow in nicely in a pot and i have grown it previously in pot so i know it's not difficult so yeah this is uh one of my now has become one of my favorite gods a humble and tasty and versatile rich god hope you liked my video today and uh, if you have any queries any questions please feel free to ask me in the comment section and if you've liked my video please like my page and subscribe to it uh, we'll come back with more such videos as you can see i've got bitter god here i've got my bottle god growing <laughs> so lots of videos coming your way so please stay hooked on bye